The pentose phosphate pathway consists of two phases. We have the oxidative and the non-oxidative phase. Now previously we focused on the non-oxidative phase and we saw that in the non-oxidative phase we have two important enzymes that help catalyze that particular reaction, that particular phase. And these two enzymes were transaldolase and transketolase. So in this lecture, I'd like to focus on the reaction mechanism of transketolase. So transketolase is the enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of the two carbon component from one sugar molecule onto another sugar molecule. The question is, how does that reaction actually take place? Well, that reaction occurs as a result of the presence of an important cofactor molecule, a prostata group known as thiamine pyrophosphate or TPP. And what thiamine pyrophosphate actually does is it helps carry out this particular reaction. It acts as a nucleophile as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin with this diagram here. So this is the thiamine pyrophosphate and it is actually attached onto the enzyme. Now, what happens in step one is this transforms from a poor nucleophile to a good nucleophile. And what happens is we have an ionization reaction taking place in which this hydrogen ion basically departs and it leaves a full negative charge on this carbon. So we form a carboanion intermediate molecule, the thiamine pyrophosphate carboanion. Now, as a result of the presence of the two electrons on this carbon atom, this becomes a good nucleophile and that, and now it acts as a strong nucleophile and attacks this electrophile. So this is one of the substrate molecules that we discussed in the previous lecture. So it's the keto substrate. In this particular case, we're using xylulose phosphate. So this carbon of the carbonyl group acts as the electrophile, this acts as a nucleophile, and essentially we form a bond between this carbon of this thiazole ring. By the way, this is the, it, this is the thiazole ring of the thiamine pyrophosphate, and so we form a bond between this carbon and this carbon. At the same exact time, this H ion that basically left is now picked up by this oxygen. So as this bond is being formed, the pi bond is being broken and a sigma bond is being formed between this oxygen and this H atom. And we form a tetrahedral intermediate molecule. Now, this tetrahedral intermediate molecule is not very stable. And so what will happen is a rearrangement will take place. And in this rearrangement, the molecule that is basically kicked off is the first product of this reaction. In this particular case, because we used xylulose 5-phosphate, the product molecule is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So this is the aldose product that we form in this reaction. So what happens is, this sigma bond is broken as a result of a pi bond that is formed between this oxygen and this carbon. And so when this sigma bond is broken, this H ion basically departs, we form this pi bond and that breaks the sigma bond. But as the sigma bond is broken, a pi bond is being formed between this carbon and this carbon. Now, as the pi bond is being broken, this pi bond breaks and the two electrons in the pi bond end up on the nitrogen. And so the nitrogen in this thiazole ring of the thiamine pyrophosphate basically acts as an electron acceptor. It accepts those electrons and it bears those two electrons in this intermediate molecule we call the activated glycoaldehyde. So we have the pi bond and the sigma bond between the carbon that came from this xylulose 5-phosphate and this carbon here. Notice we kick off our one, two, three uh, carbon molecule, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and the, and the remaining two carbon uh, atoms remain on this activated glyceraldehyde. Now, in the next step, we have the other substrate molecule basically coming in. So in this particular case, we're going to use ribose 5-phosphate. So we have an aldose substrate molecule. Remember, we have two substrate molecules and two product molecules that are formed. 
So this is one of the substrate molecules. This is the second substrate molecule. And this pi bond here acts as a nucleophile, attacks the carbon, this electrophile, and that basically forms a sigma bond between this carbon here and this carbon here. And so this is basically what we have. Again, we have a tetrahedral intermediate. And so this tetrahedral intermediate is not very stable. And again, a rearrangement will take place so that we create more stable molecules. And so this sigma bond between this H atom and this oxygen is broken. At the same time, we form the pi bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and that breaks the sigma bond. And those two electrons once more end up on that carbon. So we form this thiamine pyrophosphate in the carboanion form. And we also form that seven carbon second product molecule in this case because we used the xylulose 5-phosphate and the ribose 5-phosphate, this product is the cetoheptulose 7-phosphate molecule. It's the ketose product. So in the final step, we want to reform this initial thiamine pyrophosphate in the protonated form. And so the H atom that was kicked off is basically picked up by this carbon atom to reform that protonated thiamine pyrophosphate molecule. So we see that in this six step process, what ultimately happens is the transketylase uses that prosthetic group, the thiamine pyrophosphate, to help transfer a two carbon group from the xylulose 5-phosphate, the keto substrate molecule, to that aldo substrate, the uh, ribose 5-phosphate. In the process, we form two product molecules. We form the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, the aldose product, and we form the seven carbon sugar molecule, cetoheptulose, 7-phosphate, that ketose product. So we ultimately transfer that two carbon component from this section onto this section here to form these two product molecules. So this is how, this is the reaction mechanism of transketylase. And in the next lecture, we're going to discuss the reaction mechanism of the other enzyme used by the non-oxidative uh, phase of the pentose phosphate pathway known as transaldolase.